You know, I was born and raised in Lakers, Nigeria. I lived there. I uh, came to America at age 11. But, um, you know, that's, um, I was in uh, the southern part of Lagos, Suwalere, um, from the Robo tribe. So, you know, things back then in Nigeria were kind of like, it was kind of like third world, third worldish, you know, kind of still is third worldish. But I'm talking about, you know, back then, you know, big satellite dishes, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes, you know, no house phones, big, air, you know, big air conditioners, no central air, you know, things that I can laugh at today, you know, but kind of molded me as a man. And I just love the country, man. You know, it was a great upbringing, you know, um, grew up in a village, a very small village where everybody in the village was, you know, we were related. Everybody went to the same church, everybody went to the same market, you know, the, you know, the guy who sold the meat was my uncle, you know, the guy who sold fruit. Girl, lady who sold fruit was my aunt, so it was a real small village. But you know, it molded me to the man I am today. Um, I started playing basketball. Uh, it got really, um, it got really, it picked up a lot in Nigeria when I came to Lajuan. You know, kind of started getting big. You know, in the city of Houston. So you know, growing up in Nigeria, I was a soccer player. You know, everybody played soccer. That was that's a national sport. Mm -hmm. When I came to Lajuan, got real famous. That's when everybody started picking up the basketball. Even using soccer balls <laughs> as basketballs back in those days. So that, you know, I was probably about age seven to eight where it really got popular with me and my brothers. You know, when I was in America, I was an American, you know, American football player, as you would say. And, uh, you know, I was great at it, but I played both sports. But my football overshadowed my basketball, you know. So the most important thing for me was to try to prove to people that I was as good as a basketball player, I was a football player. But that never never really worked out because, you know, as far as football, you know, we, my family, like my brothers, we were just gifted at the sport. We were physical, you know, we were strong, like, you know, stronger than everybody else. But the transition for me was, you know, it was actually pretty tough because in college, you know, I had to prove a lot of people wrong. I had to go to, you know, a couple of schools to try to prove people wrong. Uh, prove people wrong. And, you know, it all worked out in the end. You know, I'm here, I'm still playing professional basketball. This is six years for me. You know, I'm just happy to be doing it. I graduated from Alcorn State in 2008. Uh, I did two years, my last two years of college there. And you know, Alcorn State is in Mississippi, and that's really, you know, really country town. I mean, woods, you know, cow farms and stuff like that. But it was a great experience because I was on a very good team. I had a very great coach, Samuel West, assistant coach, Jason Cable. Uh, everything was great, you know, the only the only thing that was wrong with it was, you know, it was kind of like a mid to low level Division One school. So we didn't, you know, get a lot of respect from like the mid majors and the, you know, high level majors. Like we'll go into, we'll go into, you know, schools like, you know, Bell, uh, Kansas, like that, and play them. And we weren't really taken seriously. And that was the only frustrating part about it. But at the end of the day, you know, I just was happy going to that school, and I'm just a proud Alcorn State Brave. The transition from college basketball to professional basketball, especially in Europe, is really difficult. Because some some players when they're in college, they're usually the man on their team, averaging 20, 18, or whatever. And sometimes when you get picked up by a professional team, sign a professional contract, they want you to actually be, you know, sort of a role player. And a lot of kids can't handle that. You know, when I came in, I was just strictly just to be a defender and a guy who sat in the corner and hit threes. <laughs> I was just an energy guy, and I picked up on that, you know, real, real quick. And I think that's kind of helped me in this, you know, six years I've been playing because, you know, I went from you know, different roles on different teams, being a defensive guy to being to the guy that had to score every point. And I always learned how to adjust. And, you know, a lot of kids growing up, especially the kids that want to play overseas or, you know, even if you strive to play in the NBA, know that sometimes a coach might want you to play a role. And it has to be important for you to learn how to play that role and take a back seat to other players who are better than you or, or other players who coaches might think of better than you. Yeah, this is my second year in uh, Worcester Wolves. Um, you know, my first year I actually had a great year, 20 points, like seven rebounds. It was a great year. I came back because, you know, mostly, um, you know, we lost in the playoffs and that put kind of a bad taste in my mouth. You know, it was just kind of, I was just really, you know, salty about the whole thing in the whole summertime. So I decided to come back here and try to win some, you know, try to win some trophies for this club. And also it's a great club, it's a great atmosphere. I just love the, um, I love the city, I love the fans. We have a brand new arena, you know, like a $40 million arena we're sitting in right now. And you know the goals for the season, you know, apparently you have to you know win some championships here, win a lot of games, and just make history here in this brand new arena. The Nigerian national team, uh, you know, it'll be a dream to play for my country. That's everybody's dream. You know, there's so many good Nigerian players. You know, I actually had the opportunity to try to play this summer, but I had other obligations, with other things I had going on in my life, and uh, you know, I was kind of sad I missed it. But you know, as far as everybody knows, you know, 2012 they made the you know they made the Olympics. You know, with a great squad. You know, a lot of NBA players. A lot of high-level overseas players. You know, a lot of the high-level pros. You know, some of them weren't even on that team in 2012 and, and here in you know here in England. 
So, you know, the competition is, there's a lot of competition there for the Nigerian national team. But, you know, one day, you know, I'm still young. I'm still a young kid. I would love to play on that team, even, you know, try to give it a shot. You know, and I even encourage all the, you know, all the better pros who, you know, who don't think that they should be playing or want to play or want to take a break off, you know, because the summertime is your rest period. Everybody wants to get that rest. You know, I encourage them to play because it's, you know, it'd be great for us to win something, you know, Afro basket, Olympics, or anything. Like, I'm proud to be a Nigerian, man. Like, I, that's the first thing I tell people, like, you know, you know, I'm a Nigerian nightmare. You know, there's, there's more than one of me, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's something you gotta deal with.